pull it back. And this is an introduction to Black Squiff's biology, inventory, nest searching, and nest site habitat surveys. In this presentation, we're going to go over the, some background information, an introduction to the survey protocols, nest site habitat surveys, occupancy surveys, and nest searching surveys. We're going to start with some background, uh, biology, ecology, and habitat requirements of black swifts. There's been many uh, challenges getting in the way of us learning about the black swifts. And it's taken pretty close to 100 years to be at the point where we can identify the nest sites and the nesting habitat for this species. This slide shows the taxonomy of black swifts. Uh, C. niger borealis is the subspecies that occurs in Western Canada. The black swift occurs in the Alaskan Panhandle south through British Columbia and western Alberta, and mountainous areas of the United States. An estimated 79,000 black swifts are thought to occur in Canada, which is the majority of the global population. Distinguishing features of black swifts are their long wings, forked tail, and black plumage. The black Swift flies at high speeds and has slow wing beats with short glides in between. The nestlings, the mature nestlings, have a, a, maybe a millimeter wide strip of white edging on the secondaries and on the primaries. From a distance, if you're scanning with the naked uh, eye on a cliff face, you may see something that looks like a wet cotton um, piece of string. Take a closer look at it and it may be the white edging on a black swift's primaries. Black swifts are aerial insectivores. Their main habitat is the aerial sphere. Outside of the breeding season, they spend eight months aloft. During full moons, they can ascend up to 4,000 meters to forage. They likely sleep on the wing. During the breeding season, they fly an average of 160 kilometers per day to support their nest. Breeding sites are alongside or behind waterfalls or seeps wet narrow canyons, wet caves, and sea cave entrances. Nests are in rock crevices or on ledges. General breeding site habitat character characteristics include water flow is maintained to the end of the nesting period. Shaded areas, suitable nest niches that are inaccessible to terrestrial predators, aerial access to the nest site, and moss availability. Nest phenology in Canada is poorly known. The best data is from Johnson Canyon and Banff National Park. This data shows that adults arrive at the breeding sites in mid to late May and early June. Potential egg laying and the start of incubation is June 13. The range of fledge dates are from August 28th to September 18th. These are very late fledging dates for most neotropical migrants. Black Swift nest cup is made of moss and mud, which is why the presence of moss at a breeding site is important. Here we show the progression from an egg to young nestling to older nestling that is starting to exercise its wings in preparation for fledging. 
Black Swifts have a unique breeding strategy. For instance, they lay a single egg per season. They nest in colonies or singularly. Both parents incubate, brood, and feed nestlings. They have a relatively long nesting period, up to 45 days. Adults make infrequent trips to the nest. Adults have high annual breeding and uh, nest site fidelity over the span of decades. They are long lived. The Black Swift longevity record is 19 years. Some of the unique breeding strategies of the Black Swift, like high nest site fidelity and laying a single egg per year, make the species vulnerable to population declines. The Black Swift is also an aerial insectivore. Aerial insectivores are declining globally. The Breeding Bird Survey results in poor population estimates for Black Swifts because estimating flock size is very difficult and because flocks are highly variable in time and space. Data indicates that the species have experienced declines of more than 50% over the 40-year period. Kosiwik assessed the species as endangered in 2015. The species was added to the Species at Risk Act Schedule 1 in 2019 as endangered. The causes of the declines are not well understood but are believed to be related to food availability and accessibility. Next, I'll be speaking about survey protocols for Black Swift, including the challenges of conducting inventory surveys and how to locate breeding nest sites. Nests are very difficult to locate because they are very cryptic. It's easier to locate breeding sites by observing adult Swifts flying to and from nests than by finding the active nest. This is an example of how cryptic black swifts are. The photo on the right shows the nest niche. The Canadian black swift survey protocol includes three main components. One, site habitat surveys. Two, occupancy surveys. And three, nest searching surveys. The protocol requires conducting site habitat surveys at sites with potential breeding habitat. Conducting occupancy surveys at sites with seemingly suitable breeding habitat based on site habitat survey results. And conducting nest searching surveys at all sites with suitable breeding habitat, regardless of whether black swifts were detected during occupancy surveys. Here's a flow chart that shows how the three main survey types connect with one another. Take a moment to review and enjoy this slide. I'll now cover each of the three protocol types in more detail, starting with the site habitat survey. Once you locate a potential survey site online, ground truth the site to confirm the habitat looks suitable. You can access the site and how much time and effort is involved in hiking into the site. Remember to take waypoints, photographs, and record the amount of time it takes to access the site after you've found the best route to the site. Occupancy surveys start at first light, so it's important to know how long it takes to hike in.
Here's a summary of how to conduct site habitat surveys. The surveys can be done at any time during the breeding season and at any time during the day. I recommend conducting the surveys when initially ground trooping the survey site. Multiple site habitat surveys may be required to accurately capture all of the habitat attributes. For example, multiple surveys may be needed to be conducted at sites with long canyons or multiple waterfalls. Surveys for position with a view of the potential nesting habitat and survey the habitat near the waterfall or canyon. The information to record is survey location, feature type and height, and site attributes like canopy cover, mist, and water temperature that are likely to influence the microclimate. Also record rock type because some rock types are less suitable and will have fewer niches. For example, with sedimentary rock, there will often be lots of little ledges for nests, but with rocks like granite, there will be relatively few. The survey methodology also includes qualitative scoring for the presence of six nest habitat requirements, like the presence of flowing water. Each requirement is scored from one to five, a total of 30 possible points. The objectives of the site habitat survey to determine whether the site has enough potential habitat to conduct occupancy surveys to find the best vantage point for the occupancy survey. Here's an example of a known breeding site with a single nest. This site scored the lowest among known breeding sites with a score of 17 out of 30. The site score low for moss, relief, shading, and the presence of niches. Here's another example of a known breeding site at a blacksmith colony. See, this site skied, scored high among known breeding sites with a score of 27 out of 30. The site was scored low for moss, but high for all other habitat requirements. Next, I'll be outlining the protocol for occupancy surveys, including information about potential confounding species that may trip you up. The best timing for occupancy surveys is at dawn. This was tested by comparing detection rates at dawn and dusk. A statistical comparison using Bayesian approach determined that 5.38 times the number of birds were detected per minute during the surveys at dawn relative to evening surveys. This graph from Levesque et al. 2023 shows how much more effective dawn surveys are, particularly when light levels are low. Here's a summary of the occupancy survey protocol. These surveys are conducted during egg laying, incubation, and nestling phases. Three separate surveys are conducted between the 25th of June and the 25th of August, with one survey conducted per month during that period. The surveys begin at at least 30 minutes before sunrise with surveyors positioning themselves downstream of the waterfall or canyon for unobstructed views of the habitat. The surveyors continuously scan ahead for birds flying to or from the nest sites and record all bird detections. 
numbers of individual white pathways and survey conditions. The outcome of the occupancy survey is to determine if the site is being used for nesting or roosting. Observing which direction the birds flew from helps with nest searching. Because occupancy survey is conducted in low light conditions, it can be difficult to ID black swiss from other species using the streams near the waterfalls and canyons. Consult a field guide prior to surveys to ensure that you're aware of possible confounding species, their flight patterns, their nests, and general shape that will be visible in low light conditions. The photo on the left is a black swift and the photo on the right is a rose swift. Next section covers the nest searching protocol and equipment used. Nest searching can begin in June through to the beginning of September. Surveys in mid-July to mid-August are best because the water levels are lower and there's less spray from the waterfalls. Increased nest attendance and the nestlings are more active, making them easier to see. However, failed nests may be missed during this time period. Record the search effort and the equipment used. Methodically scan the substrate for nests using your binoculars and spotting scope. Whitewash and green algal staining can provide a cue to where the nest is. Once all of the visible substrate has been searched, relocate to a new vantage point and continue nest searching. A new promising approach for locating nests is the use of infrared technology to detect heat signatures of nestlings and adults while they're in the nest. There is some constraints to infrared technology at sites where the view is limited. The photo on the slide shows two heat signatures of nestlings. It's important to confirm using a spotting scope that the heat signatures are in fact black swifts and not other species. Located nests can be monitored over time to determine annual use of breeding site and productivity. News travels pretty fast around here, and I heard that you found an active black swift nest this morning. Way to go. Welcome to the club, kid. What do you do now? Well, you're going to have to fill out the nest searching form to document the location of the nest and assign a nest ID according to the protocol. Then, take a photo of the nest site on three different scales, one showing the full extent of the breeding site, one showing the nest site, and one showing the individual nests. Label these photos as soon as you return from the field. You'll forget if you don't. Take printed copies of the photos to the site in subsequent trips or subsequent years so you can relocate your nest.
Here's a video of a very active blacksmith nestling. This activity is helpful, helpful for locating nests. few uh, safety issues that we have to pay attention to, uh, lots of driving, um, hiking around in steep terrain, rapid uh, flowing water, sleep deprivation, poor light conditions, limited or no communications, wildlife, particularly bears, rock falling rock hazards, slippery rock surfaces. The next steps for this project would be a on-site field training during the breeding season, more inventory to locate new breeding and nesting sites in British Columbia and Alberta, monitoring at known nest sites. This brings us to the end of the presentation. There are many people to thank for their contributions to this work. A big thank you to everyone listed here. And thank you for your interest in this presentation. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact us. The link's over here. If you're interested in learning more about Black Swifts, Here's a list of important documents to read. Thank you. Love that dove.